page 12, Saraband. You can see by when the composer lived, how old this, this is really old music. But we're studying the key of E minor, so this is going to be an E minor, and that's, that's fine. I go through the process for learning a piece of music, and let's see what we get. I look it over, I see it's page and one line long. The clef signs are treble and bass clef. The one sharp in the key signature, we're in the key of E minor, that's what we're studying. Make sure you're doing the scales for both, G major and E minor, and probably should go ahead and be doing the arpeggios too. G major and E minor, at least one octave up and down. Three, four time signature. Take it one hand at a time because we're getting a little tricky here. Starts out here, right hand, here. So we're sort of in this position. So one, two, and three. One and two. Scrunch up. Second finger. One and two. Scrunch up again. We're kind of walking around here. Second finger. We're saving the thumb for the G. You can use thumb on the other A though. Second line of page 13, they want second finger here. Yuck. If I'm going to do that, I want to play the dotted half note with thumb. So the last two measures of the first line on page 15 is there's two on here. This way I can reach up and get two. If you can't reach it, you can use three if you have to. I just want to connect the notes. One and two. They say second again. Well, it's okay. You can do it. I mean, you need to be able to do that. It's only one note. And then here's third line. One and two. And the thumb. See, we take advantage of these repeated notes to change hand positions. We do it a lot. One and two and three. I'll come back to that little asterisk a little later. Fourth line, it's like we had at the beginning. Sort of. The rhythm's about the same. Now to go from the fourth line to the last line, if you can reach that, that's fine. If not, then we don't want to play the half note with second finger. We want some other, maybe third finger, because you can, or fourth finger. I don't care. So the last measure in the fourth line on page 15 here. Go. I can do two, one, four. This way, I'm in position to reach down. If it'll help. I don't know how big your hands. Those two asterisks. I'll come back to those later. Eighth notes. One and two and. One. Just one note, cross over, front thumb, three, five. Three. So you have to have the natural sign there. They were at the top of page 15 in the second measure, first line. natural sign there because the sharp sign at the beginning of the measure would still apply. So it would be a D sharp so that they put in an natural. I think the sharp sounds better. Now the last measure the first line on page 15, I want to play that with little finger. This prepares me for whatever. Whether I repeat or whether I go on, the little finger there prepares me. It puts my hand in position to go on. So I want little finger on that note. So the last two measures of the first line, you're here. Scratch up a little bit, little finger. Then if I repeat, I'm going to go, I'm not going to use fifth again to go back to the beginning. I'm going to use three. One, and then scratch up and use five. Because I can connect it. Make that little change to accommodate the repeat. But if I go on to the second line, here it's an octave, that first note and second line. I'm going to play with thumb and then cross over for third finger. Now I'm in position. It's like playing four. Yes, I do thumb. That's all. I can connect them. A 
I'm trying to connect all these notes as best I can. We get down to the third line, third measure. I have to go up in here to put thumb on here because I need that. I need to reach that. And then three, one. Can you do a three, one? It takes large hands. If you can't, you may have to lift up and move a little bit, but you're not moving very far, I hope. Even if you can't reach it, do a three and one if you have to. And then you can go on. Now, the last line down there. Page 15, you're here. Thumb. And they say two, reach up. That's okay, but you can just stay there. The one, three, and one. You can do a one, three, and one, two. I mean, I'm right there, why not? This pit after reaching up and then scratching up is fine. It's good practice. It's just not necessary here. Just stay in that position. So once I have an idea what his hand is doing, I sort of have a fingering worked out. Then I go back through and try and put the hands together. I might hesitate all over. Don't care. I just want to know how the fingers are working. So I'm here, 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 and here, here. Up and then you get the idea. You put the hands together, then go back over it slowly and carefully and work out the hesitations. And I recommend, because it's a little longer piece, that you take this like a line or two lines at a time. So it's like I'm going to focus on this first line only. I'm going to get it with no hesitations. And then once I have that, I'm going to set it aside. Now I'm going to focus on the second line. I'm not going to play the first line anymore. I'm done with it for now. Focus on the second line and get it. And then take it this way whole thing one line at a time until you can get it no hesitations and once you can do that then go back and put it all together you'll still be able to play the other lines that you practice even though you may not have played them for a while you'll be able to play them then you go put and it's much more efficient because if you always just start at the beginning and go through the first part's going to get a lot of practice you're going to get good at it and the rest of it's going to yeah, not so much because you're not always going to get there you're wasting a lot of your practice time playing stuff you can already play. When you're trying to learn a piece, you want to spend your time focusing on the stuff you can't play yet. Get that out of it. Get it learned. That way, you learn it more quickly. So once I have the hesitations out, then I'll think about the articulation. This left hand, I'm going to connect it all the way through, if I can. Now, at the end of the first line on page 15, you can get away with lifting up. It's the end of a section. Whether you repeat or not, you can get away with lifting up. I'm still going to try and connect it, though. And when you get down to the bottom and you repeat back to the top, you can lift up there, too. You almost have to, although I can still, even when I repeat in the left hand, I go back to the reverse repeat sign. And I can still play the first note with thumb. And I can connect it. This, the right hand, I, I'm going to lift up. But that's okay, it's the end of the side. It's like taking a breath. So I'm connecting this. I lift up. I'm lifting up here, but not here. I'm lifting up in the right hand, I'm connecting the left. I'm going to do that all the way through. Then once I can do that, okay, then I'll think about the dynamics. The dynamics apply to the melody, and that is, well, it's sort of both hands. It's sort of like a duet. But I think it would be best to keep the left hand sort of in the background. We want to hear this. That's what we want to hear. But that's so boring. But this is kind of keeps it going. It's like a lot. Just a nice traveling walking bass thing. It's just so you can sort of hear both hands, but we still want to hear the right hand. It's hard to describe. You have to feel it. Moderately loud or mezzo forte. Go to la. 
Land on that D sharp. That's loud. Then come back down. Then top of page 90, moderately soft. Go down soft. Yeah, the second line on page 15, moderately loud again. And the second, uh, third line, you're going to go up to loud. And come back down. So you put in the dynamics. Speed, largo is slow. We need these eighth notes, or they, this would drag. It was like, really? Is that the best you can do? But these eighth notes keep us, keep us entertained. Yeah. Get the idea. Really dragging and slow. You have the repeat signs. You know how those work, I hope. You get to the end of the first line on page 15, you're going to repeat back to the beginning. Then starting with the second line on page 15, you have a reverse repeat sign. So when you get to the bottom, you're going to repeat back to that. So basically the piece is twice as long as it looks. Now let's talk about these asterisks and things in the music. On page 15, third line, third measure, and the half note there is an asterisk. This is this publisher's way of indicating a footnote. Different publishers will handle this differently. You look down at the bottom of the page and you'll see two examples down there. The first one has one asterisk. So it's referring to that. It's simply saying that is an optional way of playing the half note. Instead of a half note, we can play this thing at the bottom. It's just sixteenth notes. There. Like that. The sixteenth note are both on the first eighth note. And then you hold it. Again. Here. It's an optional way called an ornament. They're spelling it out for you. The last line next to the last measure, two asterisks. Again, it's referring to that thing underneath with two asterisks. It's an alternative way, alternate way of playing it. It's, it's, it the rhythm is the same as the other one. Yeah. Just another way of doing it. By the way, those staccatos, they're not real short staccatos because it's too slow. We don't know. That's out of character for this piece. So there's a little longer staccato. It's more like an eighth note. Now different publishers will do these examples, these ornament things differently. Some of them will give you the little music thing. They're shown at the bottom of the page. They'll give you that right above the staff, right there where it goes. If it goes to the bottom staff, they'll give it to you right under the staff, right where it goes. There's, some publishers will do that. Different ways of doing it. When you first learn it, ignore that. Just play the half note. The fancy little things like that, I generally will do those when I'm doing the articulation. But I, because of the way they've done it in the music, I held off on this and for this lesson until now. <laughs> Thank you.
Now let's play it together slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. The speed we're going is actually going to be pretty close to the speed it goes. I'm not going to do louds and softs. I'll lift up for the phrasing like it's shown and we are going to do the repeats. So I'll give us three counts. I put the metronome on eighth notes because there's eighth notes all over everywhere, but I'll give us three quarter note counts to come in. One and ready and go and one. and 